Toyota G Data 6. A really nice little performance car with evenly balanced performances from the steering brake. Everything has nice input to it. And the feel to the steering when you turn in and how you can really feel the grip level of the rear tires working and breaking away and then catching it again. Then mid corner, everything is so nicely balanced and the power plant is, is really up to it. But um, we've driven the GT86 so many times on track and always had the feeling that it was a little bit too slow. Um, so we decided to go a step further. We're gonna change the suspension, the brakes, and the tires as well. Pretty much the same treatment that any track day car will get. And we're so thrilled and excited to see how much difference will it make. Will it make the lap times a lot quicker? Will the feeling be a lot better and still drivable on the streets? So we're in the workshop. We got the GT86 on the lift. We've done our laps on the racetrack with the car in the standard specification. And now we're going to change the suspension parts, uh, shock absorbers and, uh, and the springs. But why are we going to change the shock absorbers? Well, there are mainly three reasons for you wanting to do that. Um, first of all, you can gain performance on track, gain grip. Um, secondary, you can, uh, secondarily, you can gain comfort when uh, driving the car on the street to work, picking up the kids, whatever. Then you can uh, have better comfort. Uh, and thirdly, you also have better control. Of, the better control of the chassis on the car. But this seems like a no-brainer for the, for the manufacturer. Why don't they do this when they develop the car? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, the car manufacturers, they aim at a quite a wide market. So they s try to uh, make sure that everyone likes the car more or less and it's, that it's able to go on track, but that it also suits a wide audience uh, and most of those people drive it on the street. Uh, but also it's, it's also due to cost of course because our components are more expensive, uh, better, better tuned, better, better finished uh, and that brings a higher cost. But Well at least they look expensive. Look at this. Uh, all shiny bits and pieces but uh, I've learned that even though this looks good, it's this, this little thing here. This is the secret part. Yes, exactly. Yeah, this is, uh, this is our piston shaft and our piston package for, uh, for these type of DFV dampers. Uh, essentially, what we can do is control the, uh, control the oil flow in the damper. Um, we tend to divide that up into two different speed ranges or velocity ranges of the damper itself, uh, where we have a low speed and a high speed stroke of the damper. Okay, but then you have to explain sort of what that means. Exactly, and low speed is when the damper is moving slowly, being compressed slowly or is in rebound slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you, and that's for example, a long undulating road where you just have small waves in the road or something like that. And it starts the chassis movement. Uh, or you have a high, high speed motion of the damper and that's when you hit a bump or when you, for example, have inputs from, from the driver either through steering or f on the brakes. Yeah, okay, and curbs? Curbs, exactly. Yeah, okay. Cur curbs, any, th uh, any potholes, any uh, ridges in the road, anything like that. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so, but we're talking about, f is it three different what we functions? Have, what we have is, uh, yeah, exactly. Normally, you might only see two with the low speed and the high speed, but what we also, where the low speed is what you can control with the uh, adjuster, which we put on here. Oh, okay. which is what you also have available in your car to adjust the, uh, the amount of damping you have. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's essentially just a uh, small hole, which is con and the flow through the hole is controlled by a needle. So that would be the reality for us tomorrow when we that drive this on track. We've got a low speed damping adjustment. Exactly, that's okay. correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we also uh, can tune from factory the, uh, the high speed damping of the damper. And that's by changing out these uh, small metal shims and the, the shim stack which okay. we have on the piston. And those, those shims, you yes. ain't gonna sort of lay them out here and then explain every single hole in? Not gonna give that away today, no. No, no, okay. No, no. Not for free. No. Okay. Point um, but then what we also have is we have this additional part, uh, which is our DFV valve, uh, which we essentially can see as a bit of a filter. Uh, we are able to filter out uh, any uneven uh, road surfaces or disturbances in the road uh, to give you more comfort and sort of to give you a sort of magic carpet ride feeling that you're going over a, a, a felt carpet. Well, when you're talking about magic carpet ride and then 
we're having a sort of a track day car being prepared behind us. Yeah. Uh, the, the sort of the thought of a track day car is sort of low and hard. Um, mm, and, and what we really want to show is that that, that's, that is not the case. Uh, for example, if you go in a, in a proper race car, you often find that it's relatively soft and comfortable. Because by being soft and comfortable, you're actually giving um, the, the tyres an easier place to work. Okay. And uh, by giving the tyres an easier place to work, then you also gain more grip. And that's essentially what you want from your track day or race car. Mm -hmm. um, of course, what we do instead is that we have stiffer springs, because that again controls the body a lot more. It's really much more stiffer springs. Yeah, I mean, we tend to see that we go at least 100% up in spring rate on, on uh, our much? aftermarket shocks. Yeah, definitely. Mm. With our dampers, we tend to find that we, are, we have lower, lower levels of friction which means that um, we have less discomfort from our dampers uh, or more comfort from our dampers, as you say, um, already from the beginning, from just a hardware point of view. Okay. Um, so then we can add on stiffer springs to give more control without actually adding any other discomfort. So what will be the biggest performance gains uh, when we take the car out on track? We should find that we have increased grip and we also have increased con control of the car, um, which also increases uh, drivability. So that you will feel the car is more responsive, more consistent and um, quite simply more fun to drive. We could easily go on and on about shock absorbers all night long, but we're not going to do it. What we're going to do is take a closer look on the brakes. Okay, so uh, now you guys might think that these idiots, why are they upgrading the brakes on a car with only 200 brake horsepower? Well, you know, we've driven quite a lot of test cars on track, performance oriented test cars, and uh, we've changed tires and put on uh, road legal racing tires, R rated racing tires, um, and all of a sudden the brakes don't cope. You can kill the brakes in just a few laps on a normal racetrack. So um, if we want to be safe and uh, keep a good performance level that lasts, then you really need to do something about those brakes. Okay, uh, good pads and uh, a good racing uh, brake fluid, that's a good start. But we, we go just a little bit further and upgrade the rotors and the calipers as well. It gives us that extra bit of uh, safety feeling. It can be quite nice when you drive on track especially if you do it quite a lot. Last but not least, the road legal racing tires. The grip level will go up massively compared to the standard tires on the GT86. But do remember, if you put road legal racing tires on a standard chassis and standard brakes, you might end up with a car that is hard to drive and you will kill the brakes quite quick. But uh, enough talking, let's see if we can find the differences. And right away you can feel the difference. It doesn't take many corners before you realize that the suspension package and the brakes really makes difference. Okay, if you think that if you put on a suspension package on a Toyota GT86 it will transform the car into a, a supercar, then you're so mistaken. But if you understand that why you do this is because you want to have a better grip level at all the places on the track. When you go hard over the curbs like that, cars not it doesn't it doesn't even react. Okay, you can feel the curbs like that. You feel it in the car a little bit, but the the line you're choosing through the corner is so solid, just perfect. And all the all the differences, like the steering input, much smaller steering angles. Uh, much much better grip level at all times feel the the uh, rotating mass of the car is much easier to work with way better during the test we managed to drop the lap times with four and a half seconds this is a 2.5 kilometer racetrack so four and a half seconds that's massive and furthermore, the drivability and the control of the car is so much better. Equally interesting is that the comfort level on normal roads is so much better. So, uh, all in all, it's a win-win.